Evidently, Mike Schur has heard that Metal Arc Media has a three-part documentary coming out on Amazon Prime next week as part of our growing business empire, and he is trying to impress the bosses today. He is dressed very nicely. I asked him off-air if he had a funeral today, and he's just trying to climb up our corporate ladder from stat of the day to bigger things. Welcome, Mike. It's good to see you again. Thank you, but that's not why I'm in a suit. I'm in a suit because... We're almost uh, at the official Thanksgiving season, and I have prepared a Thanksgiving presentation for you all, and I thought that it uh, sort of made sense. It was it befitted the suit befitted my role here today in uh, presenting a Thanksgiving gift to my friends at Metal Arc Media. That's all this is. The presentation is part of Stat of the Day. Should we start with Stat of the Day? Is it in the Stat of the Day? Well, I'll I'll uh, explain it to you, Dan. Look, it's almost Thanksgiving which traditionally is a time when we reflect on our lives, right? And we mm -hmm. give thanks for our good fortune. It's also a time when we collectively ignore the fact that what we are celebrating is that a bunch of bloodthirsty Europeans just straight up mm. stole an entire continent from the natives who had been living here for thousands of years. I apologize. I'm sorry. Billy Corbin somehow got a hold of my Google Doc and rewrote <laughs> the intro. I apologize for that. The point is, Metal Arkers, this year, what I'm grateful for most of all is you, all of you very fine people at Metal Ark Media. I'm thankful for Billy Gill, who is the only other person in America who still likes baseball. I'm thankful for Chris Cody and his irrational belief that it's probably fine that Tua is out there playing again. I'm thankful for Jessica, who mostly ignores my baseball stats and just stares at her phone, but every once in a while will look up just long enough to dunk on me for no reason. I'm thankful for Amin Al Hassan and his increasingly high-quality Liam Neeson limited fake and Roy for his irrational belief that hockey is fun to watch. No, 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 and I'm no. thankful to Tony for his irrational belief that there's something happening in Cincinnati is somehow an interesting football take. <laughs> it is. I'm thankful to Juju for not humiliating me on the internet yet, and Chris Whittingham for being fancy enough to insist people pronounce bona fides correctly, but also somehow dirtbaggy enough to use the timer on his stove as an alarm clock. <laughs> I'm thankful to Mike Ryan for his irrational belief that anyone in the world gives a shit about the University of Miami football team's past, present, or future. But most of all, I'm thankful for Dan Lebatard, who oh, brought no. me into your family and then tricked me into signing a Scientology-esque billion-year contract, <laughs> forcing me to show up bleary-eyed and exhausted every morning as an unpaid intern and deliver meaningless sports trivia. And then, once I've completed that job, he can suddenly say to me, hey, Mike, what are your thoughts about Uyghur Muslims and Kyrie Irving and anti-Semitism? And P.S. We're live on YouTube, so you better get this exactly right off the top of your head. And of course, I'm thankful for Stu Gotts because the second I start talking about any of that stuff, he tunes out and just goes hunting for Jets trade rumors on fake Adam Schefter Twitter accounts. So as we inch ever closer to the day, we celebrate what amounts to a genocide perpetrated by European oh, no. slave trading lunatics. Sorry. Billy Corbin broke into the document. I really should have password protected this. I have a Thanksgiving present for all of you. I now present the first annual Meadowlark Media Turducken. What? It wow. is time for Mike sure. to share his game notes. Oh. No one in the media will tell you what yes. happened better than my voice. Mike sure. <laughs> Weekend Observations oh. is brought to you by... The Miami Heat Stadium Naming Rights Committee. <laughs> Anyone interested in a 90-foot tall sign that says FTX Arena? <laughs> Come on down to a heat game. 20 bucks and it's yours. Oh, and by the way, we learned our lesson and are proud to announce that next year the Miami Heat will be playing in Twitter.com Arena. <laughs> Dan! For years we had to suffer through it. Terrible matchups, terrible games. We watched because it was all we had. I mean, what were we going to do? Spend time with our families and like talk to them? But in 2022, we get the Bills against Man Campbell and the High Flying Lions. We get the not actually any good, but somehow seven and two G men against Dak and CD Lamb. Yeah. And to finish it off, the New England Patriots take on the only good for nine minutes a game, but they're the nine minutes that count Kirk Cousins. <laughs> and Dan, make no mistake about it. Just like that. Yeah. Thanksgiving football <laughs> is back. Yeah. Thanksgiving football. 
<laughs> Football. <laughs> <laughs> I can only pray that this ends with Kirk Cousins screaming, you like that? <laughs> Directly into Bill Belichick's face. <laughs> and that Belichick's expression never changes. <laughs> Miami Heat. Draft lottery. Oh, Collision no. course. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. No. <laughs> what happened there? What happened there? What happened? No. Pat Riley. Oh, no. Trying to pay Jimmy Butler's $52 million 2025 <laughs> salary with FTX's signature crypto coin. <laughs> Collision course. <laughs> Serious question for Jessica. Were you happy that your favorite team, Notre Dame, defeated Clemson? Or were you sad because your favorite team, Clemson, <laughs> lost to Notre Dame? <laughs> Serious question for Roy. Does it bother you that the Boston Bruins are nine points up on the Panthers? Yes. Allowing me to gloat about hockey <laughs> when I haven't watched a hockey game since the Whalers <laughs> left Hartford. Yes. You know what the problem is with the Panthers, Roy? What's that? Not good enough on the forecheck. God damn it. <laughs> Serious question for Chris Cody. What's up? What in the world possessed you? To ask that guy if anyone has ever taken a dump in the Stanley Cup. That's a good question. <laughs> hey, Dan. Uh, still happy you saved his job? I mean, he's wandering Do a Tonga Vailoa. Do it in the playoffs. Yeah. You know what the T in Tua stands for, Dan? I do not. It stands for thank God we got Tyreek Hill. <laughs> you know what the T in Tyreek stands for, Dan? I do not. It stands for two I should thank God they got me. <laughs> the Dolphins look good, but we know how this ends. Stu Gatz has Jalen Waddle on God Bless Football, <laughs> and he tears his hamstring the week before the playoffs. <laughs> I really don't like this new thing where all the Miami teams are good. In fact, it's kind of making me long for a simpler time in my life. Oh! oh and now... Oh. It's time to take a trip down memory lane. Here's your guy. Mike Scherz. With back in my day. <laughs> Rivalries. <laughs> yes. As a child in my native New England, raised in the mean streets of suburban Connecticut, I had an important choice to make. Half of my town supported the Yankees and half the Red Sox. My father, himself a product of the mean streets of suburban Connecticut, felt strongly that one should never support the establishment, which to him meant the Yankees. Rooting for the Yankees, he told me, was like rooting for U.S. Steel. That's how old I am, folks. U.S. Steel was in that analogy, which is a reference even Greg Cody can enjoy. My life as an early sports fan was simple. Back in my day, I knew who I was rooting for and against. I hated the Showtime Lakers. I hated the Yankee pinstripes and their corrupt leader, George Steinbrenner. Banned for life from baseball only to somehow weasel his way back in and oversee a dynasty? Outrageous! If you cheat, you should be banned. End of story. Unless you're a Patriots coach or quarterback, in which case it's all a big misunderstanding and the system is rigged. That's what rivalries are all about, because rivalries bring you clarity of purpose. But nowadays, I find that my vitriol and bile is being directed all over the map. Frankly, I blame the TV networks, constantly trying to drum up antipathy for more and more teams, pitting the Warriors against the Clippers, pretending the Phillies have it in for the Blue Jays for some reason. The Dodgers <laughs> used to hate the Giants, end of story. Now every time they play the Astros, it's billed as a grudge match. Piffle! The Dodgers and Astros are not rivals, folks. One postseason loss to a bunch of trash can bangers does not a rivalry make. Texas used to only hate Oklahoma. Notre Dame used to only hate Army or whatever. All this realignment and expansion is destroying these once proud blood feuds. My beloved Celtics used to hate the Lakers. Now the media tells me it's the Heat who should get my dander up. And the sad thing is it's working. I have come to loathe Tyler Hero and his dumb haircut. I despise Jimmy Butler and his ridiculous haircut and Max bleeping Struess and his absurd beard. This appears to be mostly about hairstyles for me. I recoil at the mention of heat culture, that cockamamie snake oil that Pat Riley has bottled and sold to rubes like Mike Ryan, who greedily gulps it down. Do I hate the heat because they're a bunch of cocky jagweeds overseeing a cult full of googly-eyed parakeet Cortez-type acolytes? Or do I hate them because the media has artificially raised my ire with its insatiable thirst for ratings? I honestly can't even tell anymore. The fact is I've come to see the heat as my enemy, and I don't have time for another enemy. My dance card is full. The heat used to be nothing to me. They were benign, generic. 
that used to be an afterthought, no different than the Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> Which reminds me, top five 1990s baseball players who were never on the Orioles, but you would swear on your life they were at some point on the Orioles. Oh, my God. Oh my I got to write God. these down. This is top five. Uh, he used pimple. Top five 1990s baseball players who were never on the Orioles, right. but you would swear on your life they were at some point on the Orioles. Okay. This is going to be great. O-L-I, John Jaha. Oh, my God, he wasn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> O-L-I, number two, Tony Graffanino. Get out of here. Graf. Never on the Orioles. <laughs> number five, Walt Weiss. <laughs> number four, Ray Durham. <laughs> number three, Cecil Fielder. <laughs> Speaking of Cecil Fielder, it's time for the stat of the day. Start of the day. Wait a minute. Whoa. Start of the day. Whoa. It is the start of the day. Start of the day. Start Doing of the all day. The it is the start of the day. You're ducking. Start of the day. Shit. Start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day. Start of the day. <laughs> it is the start of the day. Shit was brought to you by Shit and Both Cecil and Prince Fielder finished their careers with exactly 319 home runs. <laughs> One had a season, both had a season with a home run total in the 50s. They had a season with a home run total in the 40s and four seasons with a home run total in the 30s. For each of them, exactly 40% of their hits in their career went for extra bases and exactly 22% of the balls they put into play were line drives. They both had exactly 97 two-out home runs which means they both had exactly 222 home runs with less than two outs. They also both had exactly 49 fourth inning home runs, 29 fifth inning home runs, and 18 ninth inning home runs. Those stats are courtesy of MLB.com and Sarah Langs, which I note here because I am an industry professional who takes pride in my work. <laughs> Holy shit, that's an amazing, amazing. stat. Yeah. That is We don't have time to talk about it because we got to get back to the top 5 list. Thank you. Top 5 1990s baseball players who were never on the Orioles, but you would swear in your life they were at some point on the Orioles. Number 2, Tony Womack. Get out of here. He played everywhere, Womack. And the number 1 or guy who was never on the Orioles, but you would swear in your life was at some point on the Orioles. Danny Darwin. <laughs> What? You have floored Chris Cody with I your just, stat. I mean, I don't believe you. I do believe you, but I don't. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> right. We don't have time. We have to get back to the back in my day. Uh, wait, oh, rivalries wait, are okay to a point, but too many of them means they're not even rivalries anymore. Plus, I don't like this feeling, folks. The slow, insidious creep of manufactured tribalism spreading through my soul in search of ever more teams upon which to wish, wish ill. Back in my day, you had one team you hated, and that was enough. Surely the last thing we need these days is more squabbling, more strife, more ways for us to be pitted against one another. I say we return to the halcyon days of one team, one rivalry. My name is Michael Shore, and I hate the Yankees, Lakers, and Dallas Cowboys because that's how it was <laughs> back in my day. Uh, I mean, this guy's good. Wow. This guy's He's good. good. I also, I also really hate the heat. Eat shit, man. Eat, I hate <laughs> also, quick, real quick, bonus stat of the day. Back in my days, delivered by Mike Shore this month. Two. Back in my days, delivered by Greg Cody this month. One. <laughs> and now back to weekend observations. Holy oh, shit! God, it's not over yet. Matt Ryan can scoot. <laughs> the Celtics. Are better. Yeah, they're good. Without Ime Udoka. <laughs> Justin Verlander. Fourth Cy Young. You know why he won his two gots? Why? Because he finally did it in the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> Which means he only has one Cy Young in my personal record book. Sandy Alcantara. Cy Young. Now do it in the playoffs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> He'll never pitch in the playoffs. <laughs> oh the World Cup starts this week. Soccer might be dead in America, but it's alive and well in Qatar. A horrifying hellscape of human rights violations and forced labor. This isn't even Billy Corbin writing this. It's just me. <laughs> I mean, seriously, FIFA. The hell are you doing? Speaking of hell, 
<laughs> Art Bryles. Oh. Dan, that yeah. was the Meadowlark yeah. Turducken. Yeah. 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 An annual tradition. Amazing, man. <laughs> More. Mike Sure. Dan's going to ask you to do one for Christmas. <laughs> John Jaha. <laughs> Tony never, Womack is the one that threw me off. We will never, never fire on the you, Orioles. my friend. We, you will never be fired. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.